So Qing Zhuang Zhu uh, is at the University of Virginia and will be talking, uh, going, going back uh, more to the marine domain on like seasonal seagrass effects on flow and sediment dynamics, um, specifically for the back barrier bays. Hi, could anyone hear me? We can hear you all right. Yeah, thanks Irina and to the CSDNS community for organizing this summer science series. My name is Qing Guang Zhu. I am a PhD candidate at University of Virginia. Today, I will be talking about quantifying seasonal seagrass effect on flow and sediment dynamic in a back barrier bay using modeling approach. Uh, these are part of the result that we recently submitted to JGR Oceans. The causes of this study are Pat Weiberg and Matt Reidenbaum. Uh, this study is funded by the NSF Long-Term Ecological Research. Previous studies have shown that seasonal seagrass growth and senescence exert a strong influence on coastal waves. During summer when seagrass density is high, the dense seagrass canopy can result in strong uh, attenuation of flow and waves. Therefore, the sediment suspension from the seabed is reduced. In contrast, during winter when seagrass density is low, the flow and wave attenuation caused by seagrass is weak. During this period, the sediment suspension from the seabed increased However, laboratory investigations and small-scale field measurement cannot fully resolve the spatial variations of dynamic, uh, of dynamic factors in natural environment. The synergistic effect of flow, wave, vegetation, sediment interaction, and metal scale need to be better understood. In this study, we apply a hydrodynamic and sediment transport model and couple seagrass effect on flow, wave, sediment suspension in South Bay on Virginia's Atlantic coast this is a barrier bay system with a shallow water depth of around one meter. And the aerial image shows the distribution of a restored seagrass meadow in South Bay. We validated the model using seasonal field hydrodynamic measurement within the seagrass meadows and at the reference bare site for comparison. Then after validation, we used the model to quantify the seasonal seagrass effect. Uh, today, I will focus on interpreting our model result. We used the depth 3D model to simulate the flow, weight, and sediment suspension in our study area. We divided our overall model into two model domains, the large domain with a resolution with 200 meters and a small domain with a resolution of 70 meters. We ran the model in two-dimensional depth average mode with a time step of 15 seconds. And the model was run for two simulation periods in January and June 2011. In order to incorporate vegetation effect in depth 3D, we implemented the Baptist vegetation model and the inflow simulation and the Suzuki vegetation wave energy dissipation model in wave simulation. This approach considers vegetation as cylindrical structures that could be characterized by vegetation height, stand diameter, shoot density, and vegetation jet coefficient. We use typical seasonal seagrass characteristic that based on previous observations in South Bay for our model input. The first thing we are looking at is the seasonal seagrass effect. We output the model current speed on the left, the weight high in the middle, and the suspended sediment concentration on the right, at bare side and seagrass side for comparison. The results show that during winter when seagrass density is low, the seagrass meadow has a little effect on flow reduction, way significant way high and SSC. In contrast, during summer when seagrass density is high, the dense seagrass canopy could re result in 16% of flow reduction and 20% of weight reduction, as well as 85% of SSC, re SSC reduction in seagrass meadows. With different model scenarios, our, mod our couple model is able to separate flow and weight attenuation on sediment suspension. We calculated the probability density distribution of bashers just within seagrass meadows with and without seagrass effect. You can see here the y-axis is the density and the x-axis is the shear stress in log scale. When seagrass effect were not included into the, in the model, the bashers stress in the seagrass meadow is high with a mean value of 0.5 Pascal. Flow attenuation effect alone could Reduce, could significantly reduce the best shear stress from 0.5 to 0.08 Pascal. Including flow and weight attenuation could further reduce the shear stress from 0.8 to 0.05 Pascal. 
Therefore, significant reductions in bacterial stress during summer seagrass were mainly caused by flow attenuation rather than weight attenuation. Although low density seagrass in winter has a limited effect on flow and weight attenuation, small change in winter seagrass density could result in strong variations in sediment flux into the seagrass meadows. We plot the sediment flux in the y-axis as a function of the seagrass density in the winter as in the x-axis. When the winter seagrass has a density of around 50, we can see that the sediment flux that the seagrass meadow during this period could maintain a nearly balanced sediment budget. Higher seagrass density could in gradually increase the sediment input into the seagrass meadow. However, if the density is lower than 50, the seagrass area will become erosional, leading to dramatic sediment export from the system. These strong variations of the sediment flux that are associated with winter seagrass density could have a significant impact on light availability for seagrass growth and may alter the long-term sediment budget of the seagrass ecosystems. In conclusion, we use a flow weight vegetation sediment interaction depth 3D model to investigate spatial and seasonal seagrass impact in South Bay, Virginia Coast Reserve. We found that large reductions in sediment resuspension in dense meadows were mainly caused by flow rather than weight attenuation. We also found that small change in winter seagrass density could result in strong changes in net sediment flux into and out of the meadow. That's it, I will end up here, thanks.